This is JSA TV, the newsroom for tech and telecom professionals. I'm Dean Perrine, and welcome to JSA TV. We've got a fun one for you today, folks. We're speaking with NGN and some friends. Um, NGN is a member-owned member cooperative operating 1,600 miles of fiber optic infrastructure from its headquarters in Clarksville, Georgia. NGN's low latency optical network serves carriers, service providers, and technology reliant businesses across the Southeast. Now then, NG recently held a, its first uh, Georgia Gigabit Communities Summit that brought together national industry experts and Georgia leaders to discuss how local communities with gigabit capacity can market their infrastructure assets and further develop potential as gigabit communities. Today we're continuing that discussion with Mr. Paul Belk. Paul is the president and CEO of NGN. Mr. Charlie Auberman. Charlie is the executive director of Dawson County Development Authority. And Mr. Tim Martin. Tim is the executive director of Stevens County Development Authority. Gentlemen, welcome to JSA TV. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Um, Paul, I'm going to kick the first question over to you. Why don't you tell our viewers about um, the Gigabit community? What is it? Well, you know, NGN and its partners, our economic development partners, have worked very hard to distinguish our communities, you know, quite frankly, from others because we, we've done a lot to build capacity that is in place that, to accommodate some serious industries that are, that are IT-driven. Uh, we know as communities uh, adjacent to a very large metropolitan area that the likelihood of us landing large manufacturing is, is, is probably low, but what we want to do is we want to offer those those technologies to software as a service companies to other technology companies that can come and locate and have a quality of service in their communities as well the other thing is is that georgia in particular has a film industry and that film industry is uh, in a lot of ways connected to our communities where they like to to shoot that capacity has to be available to all emerging you know, uh, verticals that George is um, really looking to promote. And so we're, we're working with our communities to make sure that that capacity is there. Outstanding, Paul. Thank you. And very cool regarding uh, the film industry. I didn't know that. Um, so the Gigabit Community Summit, tell us a little bit about that. Well, the summit was, again, we continue to stay into a, a, a perpetual partnership with our economic development professionals. Uh, these folks are out there every day trying to bring value back into their communities and in some cases trying to avoid attrition. What we want to do is provide them with a brand and with, an, with a perspective to those companies or their existing industries to promote what type of capacity is there. One of the largest or one of the biggest issues that we see sometimes is just simply communication. The word getting out to the right people. Because um, despite all the technology and how that we're wired and, and, and our, um, our, our estimations on we, you know, we're being provided all the information, we're not always getting it. So we always have to continue to work with our partners to make sure that they are equipped. Understood. Okay, very good. So um, there has definitely been some headway made concerning North Georgia broadband. What is, the, uh, what, is, what is the next step in that regard? Charlie, I'm going to kick this one over to you. Well, I think one of the, the important things is to try to spread uh, the network out to as many customers, as many opportunities as, as we can. Um, it's been very successful. Uh, NGN uh, has been successful far more than I think even we realized when we put it together. Uh, so there's a lot of people that, that want to be on the system now, and trying to get to those, uh, those folks is, is uh, a challenge. Uh, the other part of it, though, I think that's really important as far as I'm concerned and the people that I deal with is how do you use the network, and that's sort of where the gigabit community really can help, by helping people understand what you can do with it, assessing their needs, and showing them uh, different things that you can do. Um, a lot of people here, uh, especially in manufacturing, have some very sophisticated equipment, uh, and, and it operates uh, 
hooked to the to the internet, hooked to the World Wide Web. Um, but they've had to have it that part of the equipment turned off for a long time because they just until NGN came, there was no ability to use it. Now they can use it, so we're having to go back and show them, yeah, this works now, and you can do this, and you can have lights out manufacturing where the equipment runs all night. Uh, so a lot of it is just education and then trying to expand the network. Fantastic. Tim, how about you? What are your thoughts? Let me add uh, more and more we're seeing um, economic development activity from international sources. And so uh, recently we recruited a Japanese-German joint venture, NIFCO KPW. They'll be providing plastic injection uh, uh, parts to the automotive industry, BMW, Mercedes. And uh, they want to be able to see real time, live, uh, what's going on in their plant. And uh, this uh, connectivity uh, now affords that. Uh, we recruited a company from Istanbul, Turkey. Again, they have an operation up in uh, New York State, now an operation here in Georgia. And they can connect all three venues uh, via this network. Excellent. So um, lots of improvements with that network. Um, and, and obviously, it's, it's affecting a, a great number of, uh, of different, uh, different users. But let's talk about the regional communities, Tim. Um, how, is, how is the improvements in the, net, in the network really affecting those, those uh, uh, super regional and, and local communities? One of the things that uh, we've learned uh, through the years that there are certain knockout factors for economic development. You know, a project looking at a community is going to list uh, some things that are just non-negotiable, things they have to have. And uh, uh, high-speed broadband connectivity entered that list of things a few years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were not even being considered. Uh, I and my colleagues in this uh, northeast Georgia region, uh, we looked across uh, a couple of counties to our west, and the North Georgia network uh, was making some big strides. and. Uh, we wanted to play in that same pool, so we, we um, affiliated ourselves with um, our friends and now partners uh, with this project. Uh, it has been terrific for us. It's still aspirational in many respects. Uh, we have a long ways to go, but uh, it's not the knockout factor that uh, it was uh, even just uh, two or three years ago. Outstanding. Charlie, what's your take? Well, you have to understand that there – as part of the, the new economy that's coming out of the recession, there is a lot of regional type expansion, especially in healthcare, uh, where we had the little uh, rural doctor kind of rural uh, clinic type of thing. Those have been replaced by clinics that are part of large systems and large networks of, of hospital systems. Uh, here in Dawson County with, with NGN, we have the capability of those, those clinics, those regional clinics, having MRI equipment and scanners and x-ray equipment right here in town so that people used to have to drive 20, 30 miles to, to have those types of, uh, in some cases, uh, rather significant um, uh, exams and reviews. Um, now they just go a few blocks down the street. They have the same equipment, and all that is streamed to the, the larger hospitals. Um, it's a very convenient and actually a very comforting thing. Uh, those big hospitals can be kind of intimidating, you know, when you go in there and there's hundreds of uh, people and places to go there. So that is a, a very important thing. And then like Tim sort of mentioned, many of our manufacturing firms here it used to be family-owned kind of local manufacturing are now part of bigger manufacturing organizations and corporations that are based in Illinois and Ohio and, and, and other states around us, and they need to communicate and move drawings and data packages, and NGN affords that. And, and so we really uh, are, in a regional sense, a, a much closer community just from the formation of NGN, but also from the gigabit community effort. Fantastic. Thank you, Charlie. Charlie, let's just stick with you on, on this one. Uh, for starters, um, let's look into the crystal ball, okay? Um, what does the future hold for, for Georgia's gigabit communities? Well, it's, it, it's something that I spend quite a bit of time looking at as to where we need to be five years, ten years down the road. 
um, there there's a tremendous increase in interest in people moving out of urban areas, um, retiring if you if you want to say that. But uh, we have a lot of people that are moving their businesses out of the congestion, out of the the uh, high tax areas that are in in typical urban settings, and locating them out where maybe the owner doesn't have to spend as much time. Uh, in the office anymore because he's approaching retirement, so he he wants to uh, spend the afternoon on Lake Lanier or something like that. And also, we're finding a lot of the businesses that we are that are moving out of urban areas. Most of their employees, not just the owners, but the employees, actually live out here in the first place. So we're cutting down on these 45-minute, hour, one-way commutes. Uh, every morning and these thousands and thousands of cars and people that you see trying to commute every morning. Uh, so there, there's, a, there's, I think, a tremendous opportunity here to realize a, a very good sweet spot for many, many people that it, uh, by having the capabilities out here, you have the companies out here, it reduces their commutes, it improves their lifestyle, the education systems out here have improved immensely because of this connectivity. The, the educational exchange allows teachers to, to interact live uh, like we're doing today. Um, so students benefit, schools benefit, their parents benefit, and the businesses benefit. So the economy, the true caring economic community uh, that is trying to provide a, a complete package for everyone so that it's not just uh, bring in more jobs. Uh, there's a lot of things that are associated with jobs because jobs mean people, jobs mean families, and how do you, how do you improve their um, livelihood, their ability to, to enjoy their lives and, and, and have a good education. Um, I, 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 it's a very dynamic situation. I'm extremely positive and, and, and about where the, the, the rural econo uh, economic development uh, trend is going over the next 10 years. It's going to be quite fascinating. Excellent. I've actually been to Lake Lanier, and I wouldn't mind moving there myself. <laughs> um, but uh, Tim, what are your thoughts on this? Well, Lake Lanier is just one of our beautiful Northeast Georgia lakes. <laughs> Come back and we'll show you some others. <laughs> uh, one thing, it's a, maybe a bit of a tangent, but uh, the state of Georgia has a General Assembly, of course, and the Senate and uh, the House of Representatives are right now uh, in a, uh, have, they've appointed a study committee for broadband. And uh, they're traveling around the state asking communities uh, what they need to continue to see advancements in specifically uh, broadband connectivity. Um, our uh, state senator from our region is uh, one of the five senators on the on the task force, and uh, we hosted um, one of the task force meetings in our community. And uh, I, I think moving forward, what we'll see is some tweaking of some policy considerations, uh, perhaps even some ways in uh, you know, we've got a good solid uh, skeleton uh, through the North Georgia network. And uh, these last mile build outs, uh, perhaps there will be some um, programs through the state that will encourage or allow uh, companies that uh, would need this connectivity uh, to get a, um, um, an incentive or a, a stipend to help that uh, cost. But $20,000 a mile, if you have to run something three or four miles, that gets a little pricey for a, for a company, a uh, smaller company certainly. And so I think uh, we'll see some more uh, consideration in our general, our state general assembly. Very good. And Paul, we'll go ahead and let you close out the question. Wow. You know, <laughs> it, it seems like um, these these committee meetings, as as uh, Tim Martin was referring to, um, they they seem to be actually, in a way. A, a product of what we have done in our community for Georgia. Our economic development professionals in our region have set the precedent for all the others that are asking to get what we've got. And 
the reason why I feel like the product of that is we could use that as an accomplishment of what NGN has, has set out to do is because we have never wavered from our core mission of economic development, period. The network is just blinking lights. It's a means to an end. It, it's good for nothing if it doesn't bring jobs and bring communities uh, opportunities. So we are extremely positive about what's happening in our gigabit communities. Awesome. Paul, Tim, Charlie, an outstanding conversation. I hope to continue it again at, at a later date. Thank you for joining me today. I appreciate it. Thank you and so much. You got it. You got it. And thank you, viewers, for watching JSA TV. We'll see you soon. Thank you.